Ever bought something online and considered the fact that your government might be able to see what you were purchasing? No? Well, I guess in that case, you also wouldn't have considered the fact that your own employer could actually prevent you from spending your money with their competition. What? Well, everyone, I hate to break it to you, but recently, I definitely have been. You see, with distributed ledger technologies becoming more and more mainstream, companies and entire nations are actually looking for ways to leverage the benefits of enterprise-grade blockchains for literally all types of affairs. And unfortunately, one of those, as most of us should know, is CBDCs. Now, the use of CBDCs will eventually result in limited control over your own money, and therefore things like, you know, privacy, freedom, and opportunity to honestly express yourself accordingly. Unless, of course, your habits fall in line with the sovereign conglomerate expectations of you. Let's get ethical, ethical. I wanna get ethical. And while that is a huge statement to make, I do admit, I do at least think most of it will come into fruition over the coming five to 10 or so years. Now, you've got to trust me when I say we're going to notice a seismic shift from the current semi-private state to a state completely controlled by governments and corporate enterprises with you, the cog in the machine, suffering the most. Now, believe it or not, our beloved DLTs are going to be the catalyst for a new style of life. And there is honestly little we can do about it as this is how some projects will provide us with substantial returns. Although in saying that, my philosophical question to everyone is, is an extra 50X really worth potentially losing your privacy over? But I guess that is a topic for a whole different video. Now, with all that said, recently as any sane human would, I began to search for privacy first cryptocurrencies that can be used in combination with some of the possible CBDC hosted chains. Now, you know, I've come across the usual suspects like Monero, Zcash, Mina, so on and so forth. But what I happened to notice was a project that a lot of people have actually been asking me to review recently, and that's LF0. Now, for those who don't know, LF0 is a privacy enhancing public proof of stake blockchain with near instant finality, super, super low transaction fees, and a strong take on decentralization and also a priority on business application. Just what the hypothetical doctor ordered. Now, LF0 plans to make it possible for users, small to large scale businesses, enterprises, and even entire markets to communicate with each other in a privacy first manner, enabling the luxuries typically found in a centralized network, obviously leveraging the benefits of a decentralized one. Now, LF0, which from now on, I'm just going to pretty much refer to as A0 for simplicity's sake, is one of the most unique blockchains I've recently come across. And guys, that is definitely no joke. It's combining a lot of different protocols and algorithms into a kind of Frankenstein project that actually sounds really, really cool. So obviously that naturally caught my eye. So let's dive into A0 and figure out how this blockchain plans to solve at least one of my biggest issues moving forward on a very high level. And then in a video I'll be posting later in the week, we'll review the fundamentals with my analysis and price prediction. Now, if you did wanna see that video posted ASAP, please like and share this video as I will post it tomorrow if we can get 100 likes by then. So just to clarify, today's video is where we'll begin analyzing A0 on the technicals, uncovering why it will or won't have a successful future based on the very foundations and then later in the week, we'll talk about the tokenomics, team, investors, price prediction, and so on. Welcome back to a brand new video, everyone. My name is Kyron from NoBS Crypto. And if you're new around here, I, of course, would like to say welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking around and continuing to support me. Now, guys, my channel is designed to give you the most comprehensive overview of cryptocurrency projects. So you're, of course, the most informed when making your own investment decisions. Now, on my channel, you're only ever going to see objective reviews with fundamental analysis to always back everything up. Now, at the very heart of A0, there's a unique combination of two types of DLTs, which was initially what actually caught my eye. Now, the first is one you should all be very familiar with by now, and that's a typical blockchain. Now, the blockchain is actually the base layer of the protocol where the transactions are processed, ordered, and settled. 
just kind of like what a typical blockchain is honestly used for. However, though, the team at A0 realized that blockchains are really good at ensuring data is immutable and, of course, highly secure, but they do lack in the speed department, and that's at all levels. So what they've actually done is literally inject it with a super serum that would make Captain America look like Captain Spelling Bee. Iridocyclitis. It all comes from the second DLT used in the protocol called a DAG or Directed Acylic Graph, and it's synonymous with fast TPS and transaction finality, exactly what blockchains are lacking. But what they've done is super novel for crypto. They've actually used the DAG in their consensus algorithm called ABFT, which simply stands for Aleph Byzantine Fault Tolerance. Now, rather than a typical POS consensus algorithm consisting of things like, you know, a single block producer and a small set of committee members, the DAG removes the chance of malicious users by simply ordering the transactions itself, coming to an agreement from a large set of committee members, and then placing said transactions into the blocks of the blockchain thereafter. So yes, technically the DAG does operate first, otherwise there would be no order to the transactions or confirmation they're even bloody valid, just as any consensus algorithm works. Now, by doing so, the blockchain essentially forms after the DAG by collecting all the data finalized from it, storing it all immutably. Now, what this actually means is that the blocks in the blockchain don't have to be mined or created by a block producer, completely removing block rewards, and therefore users save money on the associated transaction fees. So if someone asks you what the hell LF0 is, it is a blockchain first. But the way the blocks come to agreement on consensus is through their novel consensus algorithm, which uses a DAG rather than fundamentally weak and limiting vectors like individual producers or even a small and sometimes set-sized number of committee members. What I've noticed a lot of people getting confused with is that these are somehow two separate layers on the network, like, you know, a layer one and a layer two, but this is not the case, guys. The blockchain is simply the protocol that runs the entire network, which is what you would answer if someone asked you what type of DLT LF0 was. But the DAG is part of how the network comes to consensus, which is always categorized within the term blockchain, as the DAG itself is part of the most important part of the network, which again is the beating heart, it's the consensus algorithm. But you might be thinking to yourself, why even use a blockchain when a DAG seems to be doing everything pretty well good on its own? Well, guys, it's pretty much because of security. You see, a DAG doesn't have the same levels of security, nor, let's face it, decentralization as a blockchain does. So using both for their strengths and then covering the other's weaknesses seems like a pretty fair deal to me. And on that note, I actually mentioned earlier that the ABFT has a very large committee. And that's because any POS consensus algorithm needs to have a committee to agree on the validity of the transactions so that they aren't, you know, double spent. So A0 mentions they do plan to start with a conservative 128 members as a part of this committee, which is actually a large amount, but this is going to be dramatically scaled over time, according to them. Now, there is also a mechanism that randomizes these members over a set period of time, and depending on that time and also how they're randomized, and of course, how fast the randomization occurs, it will greatly impact the risk of security. Now, this fundamentally makes the network far more decentralized than what you could find in most other POS networks because there is no block producer and the committee is far greater in number than what you'd find in other POS blockchains, often having around five, 10 or 15 members. Now, this means that attack vectors and a network that is completely leaderless is obviously active in LF0. Now, on that note, guys, decentralization will also come in the form of how many validators are securing the blockchain, which obviously isn't anything technologically new to discuss. So I'm not going to go into further detail other than to mention that as of right now, there are only 14 active, which isn't decentralized by anyone's standards. But in saying that, I will admit A0 has only just opened the network to public validators, which is a huge milestone. So congratulations, guys, which only occurred about three days ago. So in my opinion, 
there's nothing to worry about here. Obviously, any ecosystem, any network takes time to develop. But before we move on, I'd just like to mention that the transaction speed of LF0 are currently estimated to be around 89,600 in a simulated environment of 112 AWS nodes spread across five continents. Although this number doesn't sound that impressive when you compare it to you know centralized markets requiring millions per second, it is a good start because remember, Rome was not built in a day. And as a matter of fact, it's also important to remember that layer one blockchains need to emphasize different aspects of a network, mainly being security and decentralization, while layer two implementations can offer aspects to boost TPS. So while 89,600 seems quite low in comparison to centralized markets, and it was obviously only completed on 112 nodes, which is not a lot, we need to consider some variables. So A, Yes, this is only the beginning of LF0, which I've just mentioned. Now, B is that layer two networks can be utilized for speed, of course, as I just mentioned again, and C that LF0 will be a privacy layer for other layer ones, meaning it's not designed to be the fastest blockchain, but rather a privacy layer and a fast one at that. And that leads me into a perfect segue for the reason I'm actually making this video. It's the privacy enhancing infrastructure. Now there'll be two ways in which users can use privacy features of LF0 and both will be powered by their products called Liminal come its launch in 2023. Now users can either access the privacy features on A0 from dApps that are built directly on the platform or by integrating with the multi-chain privacy layer, which means it'll be possible to write smart contracts on Ethereum or Neo protocol while keeping a private state of the contract on LF0, which is pretty damn cool. Basically, I guess you guys can think of Liminal as LF0 solution to the entire privacy issue. And just like the main network, it does this by utilizing two very powerful synergistic privacy enhancing protocols called ZK Snarks, which are a branch of zero knowledge proofs, and also SMPC, which stands for Secure Multi-Party Computation. Now, both protocols are already implemented in many, many privacy centric and even non-privacy centric networks. However, not in such a synergistic fashion like they are in LF0. When you think about it, guys, and when you do a bit of research, it's actually quite a dynamic duo when paired in the correct way as zero knowledge proofs allow one party to know that the other party has the correct data without ever needing to see it and secure multi-party computation allows for information to be cryptographically protected first split across members of a network and then computed locally on all devices then recombined where needed to be to reveal the sum of that local computation they complement each other in a perfect way kind of like how the fast dag based consensus algorithm complements the slow blockchain now i would love to discuss how everything works together so if you wanted to see that video let me know down below i would love to break this down on a lot lower kind of view but on a side note guys LF0 was actually recently implemented into Rust to allow for integration with the Parity Substrate stack, essentially meaning dApps built on the network will be able to leverage Substrate's insane features. And if you're a developer out there, you know how insane they really are. But all in all, guys, the technical details look absolutely fantastic. So these guys got a huge, huge tick there. Although I haven't dug as deep into the technical details like I normally would, so I hope that this has provided you with enough of an understanding of LF0 to explain it to your friends and family. But if you did want to see that deep dive into the technicals like I do in my other series, please let me know by leaving a comment down below. Otherwise, it ain't going to happen. But to put an exact rating on the technicals, Overall, guys, I'm going to give them a 9.5 out of 10 here. If you did want to learn more about LF0 on a fundamental level, then please stay tuned for the fundamental analysis later in the week. That video will also provide a price prediction for 2025. That being said, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you all in that one. Until then, take care. Bye. Hey, I just want to stop you really quickly and thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see the fundamental breakdown of this project, please click the link over there. And if you want to see a whole new review altogether, click the link down there. If not, make sure you subscribe for future videos and interviews. And until then, guys, thank you. See you soon.